Welcome to On Finding Peace with Chris Shea. I am your host, Chris Shea, the founder of Life's Journey Life Coaching. I'm very pleased to present this inaugural podcast. I'm very grateful to everyone who is listening and to all of those who have encouraged me in this venture. For introduction, I am a counselor, an author, a life coach, and a seminar speaker. Speaking is not foreign to me, although the realm of podcasting is, so I hope you all bear with me, especially in this inaugural presentation. And since the timing of this presentation is such that it is happening at the holiday season, I wanted to touch upon the idea of stress and how stress plays a role in our lives, affects the way we view the world, affects our interactions with other people, and most definitely affects our view on this holiday season. It is interesting that during this time of the year, when most of us try to be at peace, most of us think of family, most of us focus on traditions. We might be decorating our houses, we might be getting cards, buying gifts, All of these different traditions that we have, we are out doing them. And these traditions hopefully bring us back to a time when life may have been simpler. It brings us back to a time when maybe as children, we weren't as stressed as we may now be. But for many of us, this time of the year becomes the most stressed time of the year for all the reasons that I just mentioned. How many of us at this time of the year have to do extra shopping, extra planning, preparation? We need to get out and make reservations. We need to think of travel. Did we save enough money? Is the item that our child wants still available? Did we forget somebody on our Christmas card list? Did we forget to invite somebody to the meal? Who's making what? Who's going to the office party? Who's decorating? What do we do when the lights don't work? All of these and many, many more is what really becomes stressful for many people. And this time of the year, which many of us would say would be the most joyous time, becomes a time of the year that we may not long for. Even for myself, in thinking of doing this podcast, I was sitting down to work on writing a blog based on this talk, and my goal was to write this a couple weeks ago. My goal to start this blog was, say, a couple weeks ago. But what has happened in these last couple weeks are many of the things that I've mentioned. For starting out the holidays with Thanksgiving time and all the preparation All of this piles into the focus away from what some of our other goals may be. So for myself, it has taken away the couple weeks to inaugurate the podcast, to actually finalize some of my reflections and writing for the blog piece. But that can be minuscule in terms of others who are facing a lot more stressors than waiting a couple weeks with a podcast. What I'd like to talk about and 
look at as we reflect on the stress of this time are what are some of the practical ways that we can begin to lessen our stress. One of the things that I've learned in my life is that we're not going to get rid of our stress, but we do have the ability to lessen our stress. So if your goal is to forget about all stress for this season, I would tend to say that is a very unrealistic goal. A wonderful goal to have. I wish we could do that goal. But I believe in reality that goal is not going to be achieved. So let's not focus on that goal. But we can reduce our stress. And we can reduce our stress in a few somewhat simple ways. Although the ways to reduce the stress is going to take a little bit of practice. One of the first ways that I would suggest in focusing on reducing our stress is looking at our expectations. To examine what is it that I expect or want to happen. I believe, and in my own experience, that it's our unrealistic expectations that will eventually lead us to a lot of stress and anxiety. And the holiday season is one of those times when our expectations seem high. Our expectations are elevated mainly because of the commercial media, mainly because of TV shows that we have seen as children, because of Norman Rockwell, a wonderful American painter. I love his work, but I think his work, especially around the holiday times, his images portray a perfection that does not exist. But yet we have grown up with these images and these movies and these commercials telling us what family time in the holidays is supposed to be. And yet we rarely see the images of what family life during the holidays actually is. Most of us can probably relate with the statement that the two, the Norman Rockwell scene and the reality of many of our families, very far apart. But that doesn't make it wrong or bad. If we begin to focus on reality and accept reality, we can change our expectations such that they will meet reality. If we can reframe our expectations away from the Norman Rockwell scene and focus on who is in my family, to spend some time focusing on what is going to go wrong when certain family members get together. Not so much to plan for that or to hope for that, but to expect that. For see, if I expect Norman Rockwell and I get a family member arguing with another family member who storms out of the house or throws food or knocks over the tree, whatever it may be, I'm going to feel stressed and down and think the holiday is ruined. But if my expectation was reality... If I think to myself, so-and-so in the family is probably going to make a scene, and -and so-and-so may end up crashing something, and -and so-and-so may end up being drunk, when they do, they meet our expectation. 
And not to say we don't try to do things to mitigate those events from happening, but we also have to accept that life is not perfect, we are not perfect, and our families are not perfect. We are not going to have a Norman Rockwell Christmas. But that doesn't mean we lower expectations. We still strive to be our best, but strive to be the best with the understanding that our best is not going to be perfect because we aren't perfect. And this segues into my other thought for how do we reduce stress during this time of the year. And we do that by changing our perception. For the way that I view myself and the people around me in my life, that perception becomes my reality. But many of us have to understand that my perception and my reality may not be the reality of what's happening. Instead, that perception is just what I think it is. That doesn't mean it really is that. But nonetheless, if I can change the way that I see the world around me, if I can change the way that I view myself, then my perception is going to change. If I can find the time to understand that life is not going to be perfect, but it's going to be the best that it can be, I can change my perception. If I can come to the understanding that I am not perfect, I can change my perception, which is also changing my expectations. In changing perspective, how often do we just sit down and look at the beauty that is around us? How often do we actually stop and try to examine what is going on in my life? Can we find those little things that we miss because we're so stressed and hectic and rushed? Right now I have the wonderful blessing that as I record this, I'm watching the sunset over the water. And I know not everyone can get a view of the sunset over the water. But even though that is happening outside, I could easily miss that view. For I can say, well, I have a podcast to record. I have something to write. I have shopping to do. I have this to do. I have that to do. If I don't stop myself from observing what is happening around me, I can miss that sunset, which actually is occurring all around me. What are these little things that we miss? And we all do it. When was the last time as you walked from building to building or from your residence to your vehicle to public transportation to wherever you're going, when was the last time you paused long enough to look and see what is the wildlife around me? Now, you might say, well, I don't live in the woods. I don't have wildlife around me. Ah, but see, we do have wildlife around us. When was the last time you saw the ant, the spider, the ladybug, maybe the grasshopper? When was the last time you noticed a certain notch in, in a certain tree? When was the last time you noticed that somebody changed something in their house? When was the last time we noticed the person sitting next to us on the bus? These are the little things that I'm talking about, that if we can change that perception and view the world in its beauty, even though the world may be falling apart around us, there is beauty to be found. But it also starts with us. Can I see the beauty within me? And that becomes so important to try to find. I don't have the magic bullet on how to do that. I wish I did. But I do have a means to doing that. And that's what I've been talking about. 
how do I change my perception? How do I change my expectations? How do I notice the little things and the small beauties that are happening all the time? And for this podcast, I have one final thought about how do I begin to reduce my stress. And it's the word simplicity. Simplify. If we notice all the things that we are doing to make this holiday what we would say is perfect and Norman Rockwell-esque. Hmm, I wonder if that's a term. Norman Rockwell-esque. Anyways, if we can try to find the time to notice all of those things that we are doing and think to yourself, what in all of this is actually necessary? What in all of this is just something I'm adding on that we don't really need, but it's causing the extra stress? How do I get rid of the things in the world around me, the things that I feel are necessary that really are not, and begin to simplify my life? To notice that, yes, I want maybe our family dinner to be the best dinner that it can be. And I'm not saying don't strive for that best. You bring out the best silverware, the best plates, the best food. Maybe we're even going to place set it the way that you saw in a magazine. That's all fine. But how do we simplify our life in the sense of what becomes important to us in life. Is that part of the dinner, the most important piece that those forks and knives are exactly where they're supposed to be in the right angle that they are supposed to be completely separate from the plate at the same distance? I'm talking from my own OCD-ness there. But is that what's more important or is what's more important the fact that family is around us gathered for a celebration. What is our focus in life? That's what I'm talking about in simplifying one's life. It's not necessarily getting rid of things, but it's simplifying in the sense of what is my focus? What is most important? And it's not those tiny things and the objects, but it's the people It's our intentions. It's what's deep within us. That's what's most important. Everything else is nice, but not necessary. How do we make that focus? For me, as I look at all that is going on around me and all of the activities that that I have going on in my life, I think when I work backwards in these suggestions, it tends to help me to make a little more sense of the world around me and to reduce a lot of that stress that I have. Because if I'm simplifying my life in the sense that I'm focusing my thoughts of what is important, what I'm actually doing is changing my perception. And as we briefly mentioned, when I change my perception, then I change how I feel. Once I've had that shift in perception, then changing my expectation, creating more realistic expectations, becomes all that easier. Because once I've changed that expectation, and my perception is about what is important, that's where now my life becomes more simple. So if the kids don't set the table just as I had hoped, or the dog knocks something over just at the wrong moment, and the Christmas lights go out just when we were going to sing that traditional song that we sing, take a breath and think to yourself, what is most important here? Is it that those lights went out or the dog messed something up or something didn't go right? Or is it most important that we are together and we are doing what we do as family? As I said at the beginning, I don't really have answers or solutions necessarily, but 
suggestions and ways of helping us to move forward. I hope you'll continue to listen to future podcasts. If you have any thoughts or ideas of what you would like to hear, please send me a message. I can be found on the internet at www.lifesjourneyblog.com. I appreciate everyone listening. I hope you all have a wonderful, blessed, peace-filled holiday. And keep your expectations where they need to be focused. What is most important to us in our lives? I leave this inaugural podcast wishing you a very mindful day.